and we've got another project. That's right, another electric bike conversion. This time we're going to do it on a KTM. We're going to follow some steps from my buddy Dawn. I'll put a link to his his uh, YouTube channel. He's done some pretty interesting things, He's building an awesome Duke right now. Um, yeah, he did put that video out, so I'm not telling you anything. I shouldn't just yet, but like I said, so what we're going to do is we're going to start here. I'm going to start tearing this bike down. One thing that I see a lot of people do when they build these is they just set the motor in there and try to eyeball things. I don't really like that. So what I'm going to do is we're going to pull the seat, the tank, and we're going to pull this foot peg guard right here, off, or this frame guard off. And we're going to use these two bolt holes right here. There's one there, maybe this one. We're going to make a, a little shim, I guess you'd call it, or a guide to know exactly where that sprocket needs to be. So it lines up perfectly. We want that sprocket for this electric motor to sit exactly where this sits right here. So that is gonna change. A lot of people don't realize this. It being up a millimeter or two can completely change the geometry and the way that the chain puts tension on the rear wheel and cause all kinds of weird things to happen. So it's very important that not only is it lined up, but it's also where it needs to be in relative terms to the axle right the axle line swing arm pivot to here because that creates um different geometry different things happening it causes it to either squat or anti-squat suzuki has the magic number really and truly with their frame geometry if you are into motorcycles and into like actual the technical side of dirt bikes suzuki's rake angle for a long time was real steep while everybody else was a little more slack on which means that the forks were out more they were able to get away with that real steep uh, angle because of the relationship from the swing arm axle swing arm pivot to sprocket and how all that geometry makes a huge difference on how the suspension acts whether the bike is squats under acceleration the rear ends uh polaris had a sport quad and the way that their geometry was back in this is i don't remember what it was called but back in the day and when you got hard on the throttle the back of that bike would raise up and that was all trying to force the back tires into the ground and that was all from the geometry of that right there so we don't want to change this ktm does a lot of, of r d of getting it just right for the amount of flex this frame has for the rake angle for all that stuff so let's not change that Let's make sure we get it exactly where it is right now. The bike is tore down. I last night stayed up, listening to some podcasts, head down, tore the bike apart. Here are the basically the majority of what we're keeping off the frame. There's a couple things. Subframe, obviously, the tank, which will have to be modified. I know that he is going to be replacing his plastics. And then here is the pile of stuff that is coming off the bike. We will be using the clutch lever, we're gonna convert it to a rear handbrake. Well, pretty, pretty easy to do, and I can show you how we're gonna do that whenever we get to that point. But as of right now, here is all the stuff that we're not using. This pile of parts right here, the engine, all of the wiring, the radiators, the pipe, uh, intake, rear brake pedal, throttle, all that stuff going by the wayside. Next thing I need to do is get this out there. We're going to pressure wash this frame, clean it up to the best that we can. So we've got the motor mounted in there. As you can see, the motor mounts have been made, cut out on the arc droid. I think what I'll do is get that lower mount finished, kind of zoom in on it, show you how it's going to go together. I have it coming up here in the back, and I haven't decided if I'm going to make this whole thing one, which I think that's what I'm going to do which will basically be come up from here, go under the battery. I have it held off the frame, the little slits of plywood, and I went ahead and cut the tank. You see I had to remove some meat under the tank. It wasn't very much to get it in there. This uh, Amorgi battery right here is really, really, really packaged well for a build like this. The nice thing is, for me, I'm a big fan of using this top motor mount. If not, you have so much torque being translated through what, what is basically six um, eight millimeter 
thread, the threaded nuts. So I really like having this upper motor mount, just gives it a little bit more. We will connect these up here. We'll make our battery tray. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'm gonna be able to make this a quick hot swappable. Basically, you will, we'd build a good box across the bottom that holds it. This side open right here and then build a folding strap that came up and another hinge on the top and a hinge on this side just to give it just to give this top piece some movement and then a, something to latch it down along here we could come up with two small hinges and bring it up into one i mean look into that it's gonna that could cost me a day maybe to make it a little a, a little easier to swap the battery but it may be worth it let's go ahead and we'll come up here we'll make the battery tray the first thing we'll do make this battery tray across here make it so basically ugh, i can't even talk you need to build the tray stand alone and then we can weld it in one thing i do like i'm going to be able to use these front motor mounts to hook the tray to. The tray is gonna be way more solid than that fender was on there. The, uh, the tray be nice and tight, and if I do it the way that I'm talking, we could be able to make this area right here clamp down real hard. It could easily be um, in the design. Yeah. Let's get this, the bottom of this piece right here the tray designed. And then we'll figure out how we're gonna weld it in. And we're done. Well, not really. I got the motor mounted. I've got the battery mounted. I wanna bring you in here and show you exactly what I had to do to do this and how I designed it. It, it is just on, in final mock-up. I have one little piece to paint and it'll be ready to go. So. As we take it apart, I'll show you all the pieces, what my thought behind them was, how it was designed, and let me know what you think. I really, really like this design, and I may do this going forward with a lot more bikes the way it's held in there. Let me bring you in here. Let's get these mocked up plastics and seat out of the way. Let me bring you in here and show you exactly how it all fit. The battery is mounted. It's kind of hard to see on camera as I watch some of the playback because it is black and the mounts are black. It just hard to really visualize. I'll, uh, once I can, the camera, I'll pan it around. You'll get to see all of this. It's a black chrome on these Amorgy batteries and oh, it's just beautiful. It is a beautiful battery. As far as the holdup of this finish, it's supposed to be pretty good. Uh, that's what we're hoping. I did move the sticker that was on the side of the battery to here. Still be seen, still be used, but it makes this clean look. So that is awesome. I really wanted to make this hot swappable. Like how mine is where I get a few hand screws and swap the battery. Unfortunately, the charging port, so the charging port, which is right there, is too tall and the battery won't come out because I'd have to cut this off, which this is a mounting tab for the plastics and it would come right through there. So we can't do that. It'll just have to be the battery. Will be easy to get out. You just have to raise the tank, which will be disconnecting the plastics, disconnecting the tank and raising it up. It would slide out of there. Hot swappable in a few minutes? Unfortunately, no. That doesn't mean it's not swappable. I have a latch over here. This latch is just a, a quick release. Can I get my hands on it? So you release that latch, unhook the battery. There you go. And this one folds down and out of the way to clear for the battery to come out. Now with the battery out, you can get a better look that's that latch, and here's where it latches to, and it pulls the battery and holds it from rattling. It is mounted solidly 
to the front motor mount here. It is then mounted to the engine here, to the motor, not engine, to the motor. And then right through here, it is mounted to this bracket, which then comes down to the mounts that hook it to the swing arm. Hooked to the swing arm is the plate that holds the motor, which comes down to the lower motor mount right there. And it is all secure. I mean, it's really strong. It has a 20 millimeter or basically one inch piece of pipe with a 17 inch or 17 millimeter internals. That way it fits perfectly through the axle. I have this in here just for dummy mock-up, but the axle is on the other side. Let me get this piece off. And, ow! Yeah, that, that hurt. Let me hit it off, and I'll kind of give you a better look at it. That's the mount right there. I did weld captured nuts on the backside. I really like captured nuts. It just makes life easier for mounting. And whenever the, the battery is in there, it's like that. This it's over. It's called over center latching. It over center latches. And it, it releases. This side just moves to make it easy to put the battery in. I could have made this part fixed. It just makes it so much easier. I put hinges down on the bottom to give the movement there and hinges up top. All welded on. And then this opens up. This is where it hooks to the front of the frame right here. The battery sits right in there, nice and comfortable. And then in the back, is where it is attached. Let me show you that part. Also, put my arc droid to work last night and look at all the hexagons. And unless you are out of the loop, you know that hexagons are the best of gones. And now it's all mounted in there. All the mechanical stuff is done. It's all solid, rigid, won't rattle. That's very important when you're building these why I put that hasp that tightens down and holds the battery down. We want to make sure it is as, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Snug as a bug in a rug. And this one is. This Amorgy battery, once again, is absolutely gorgeous with the black chrome. It looks so good against the orange. That's going to be all I can do this week. It was two days worth of work. Maybe could have been more, but... I, this is, this is as much as I can get done. I need to get a video out so I got to edit it, do all that happy stuff. This is all mounted. The next video, we're going to mount the subframe, show you how we're going to hook up all of the powering, all the wiring and everything that goes to it. So we'll, please subscribe, watch this. Take the next video on this bike, it should be wired. We should be spinning a back tire.